all of this then comes into play in the relationship between um, the patient and the analyst. Yes. And, um, you know, let's talk about that for a moment. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I think fundamental to the psychoanalytical experience is this sort of therapeutic relationship that develops between the patient and the analyst. Right. Um, what is referred to um, as a transference. As the transference. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. how would you describe um, transference in a patient and um, countertransference in the psychoanalyst and the significance of transference in helping to um, the patient overcome their difficulties or, you know, pain from the past or, or okay. and now? Okay, so transference is literally a process of transfer. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the technical term is displacement. In other words, a, a patient has feelings uh, around her father mm. and she comes into treatment with me and pretty soon she's displacing the feelings, transferring the feelings that she had towards her father onto me. I'm becoming for her a kind of metaphorical father. It's as if I'm the father. Now if she's a neurotic patient, she knows this is as if. Right. If she's a closer to psychotic patient, at times it's like I'm really her father. Uh, the, the, a psychotic transference is taken very literally. A, a more neurotic transference is more understood by the patient to be as if. But, okay, I'm thinking of a patient who um, was traumatized when the father divorced uh, the mother uh, when she was a very young child and then even though she continued to see the father he was stunned and disoriented by the divorce he didn't know how to relate to this little girl he spent time with her but she experienced him as cold uh, absent uncaring strict uh, and she was left with a longing for uh, a close, good relationship with a good dad. Right. And so now we, we, we see the roots here of a, 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 a kind of a split transference. And in her work with me, initially, I, she idealized me. I became the available, reliable, warm, caring daddy that she had always longed for. Until, I forget what the event was, but one day something happened in the therapy and, and, and it switched and I became, uh, she became disappointed in me and uh, the, the idealization crashed. Uh, I was no longer the perfect daddy that she had always longed for and of course she swung then to the other extreme. Now I was the cold, remote, uh, abandoning. This is the negative transfer. This is the negative transfer. Right, right. Okay. Analysts tend to be more comfortable with the positive <laughs> transfer. I mean, who doesn't like <laughs> yeah. being idealized? <laughs> right. uh, and, and we're often uncomfortable. Freud himself was very uncomfortable with the negative transfer. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but, you know. But it's very important to it's our work. It's yeah. well, crucial. Melanie Klein's whole yeah. critique of Freud was that mm -hmm. he needed to deal <laughs> right. with the negative transfer. Right. And so we made real gains. Now, you don't want the negative transfer to get so strong that the patient slams out of the therapy and quits in a huff. Right. You know, hopefully, uh, a good enough working relationship has been established such that when the negative transference emerges, it can be talked about, as it was in the case that I was just telling you. She was able to realize that this now was the daddy she was so angry at, and the anger at her dad uh, was now coming full force at me. Mm -hmm. And she was able to know that it wasn't really me. And so it's like through interpreting that, that this understanding shifts something inside the patient? Exactly. Right. She was able to then see how she idealizes mm -hmm. and she was able to see then how she devalues and she was able to see how uh, her longings for the good dad were getting in the way of her building a relationship with any real man in the world because no man was living up to the idealized to the ideal figure she was longing for I mean what's an ordinary how's an ordinary 
guy going to make up for, you know, this perfect dad that she longed right. for? I mean, and therefore she was firing boyfriend after boyfriend because none of them were coming up to the mark, right? I and see. then sooner or later, when they failed to come up to the mark, they were getting this anger. Mm -hmm. And so now she's working this whole thing out with me. And instead of firing me, like she was firing boyfriend after boyfriend, she was sticking with me. And we were working this through. Now mourning is involved with that. Mm -hmm. Because for her to get over this idealization, she has to let go of her childhood dream of one day having the perfect daddy. Right, right. So she mourns that and now she's not so idealizing and she's more forgiving towards the humanness of the guys she gets involved with. She's less right. demanding that they be perfect and she's not dumping all of this anger on them anymore and she's you know finally able to have a reasonable uh, long-lasting relationship with someone. That's how the process works. Okay.